the files are available for free with the link below. There's three different types available. You have just your standard rifle mag, which has uh, two belt loops on the back that you can thread your belt through. Uh, you have the pistol one that just has the single belt loop. Uh, you just thread your belt through. Or you have the pistol that has the adjustable belt loop. The adjustable belt loop one allows you to angle uh, the pistol mag from this angle all the way to vertical and then all the way over here to this other extreme over here for the lefties. Uh, but we're going to show you how to put together this one right here because it's the same as the other ones, just has a couple extra steps for uh, the adjustable bit. I printed these in PLA Plus. Uh, I'm sure uh, PLA would work too. I think the plus just has a little bit extra strength to it, so that's what I would recommend. Uh, you're going to need two of the sides, one bottom, a front and back. You're going to have a different bottom uh, for the rifle and the pistol, but the sides are the same for all of them. And obviously the rifle and the pistol have different fronts and backs. Um, they're all grouped together in individual folders, so you'll know which one to download and which parts you'll need. Uh, if you go to Thingiverse, it'll, it'll have them all grouped together there. So what we're going to do first is uh, we're just going to stitch these guys together. Uh, you want the chamfers all facing inwards. So you can see we have chamfer there, there, and then on these little uh, side pieces here. We're gonna put those like that to where it all kind of has like feed ramps to where we go and stick the mag in, it helps guide it to the inside. But uh, first we need to prep our shock cord. This stuff, it's, it's pretty interesting. There's a particular way, a really specific way you have to do it to make it work well. We have to make a little aglet on the end of this, like the end of a shoelace, to make it easy to feed through these things. Otherwise, it's gonna be super hard trying to jam this eighth inch uh, piece of flexible material through these eighth inch holes. So to make your aglet, you need to grab the end of your shock cord and then tie the other piece to something so you can stretch it out. Because when you stretch shock cord, it becomes uh, narrower in diameter because it's elongating, so it gets skinnier. And we want to wrap it whenever it's as skinny as it can be. So right now I have this under as much tension as I can put on it where the uh, nylon sheathing maxes out. And I'm going to slowly apply this little piece of tape just right on the very edge of the piece of tape and wrap it around. And I'm making sure that there's no wrinkles, no humps in this thing. I'm just slowly gonna wrap it all the way around and keep on slowly smoothing it out until the entire inch of tape is wrapped around this piece of shock cord. This may take you a few tries. If it doesn't work out right for you the first time and doesn't seem like you can fit it through the hole easily, just uh, pull the tape off, stretch it out, and try it again. Then you can slowly release, and you can see here that it's a lot skinnier in diameter than the rest of it is. So now, just take and trim off the little end, and there you go. It just looks like the aglet on the end of a shoelace. So now it's nice and narrow. What you do at the other end is you can just tie a little overhand knot in it. Just like that. For the angled pistol pouch, there's one more step you're gonna to have to do before you start threading it together. And that is you need to put your nuts in these little recessed hexagon holes right there. So I have them set up, like I said, for the nut for the uh, M4 metric nuts. I have them to where they're going to be a tight fit to where you can just set that little nut on top of that hexagon and make sure it's all lined up. You just give it a little tap with a hammer and you can drive them in there. That way you don't ever have to worry about them falling out or uh, loosening up on you. At least loosen up from this side. So now they're both completely flush. We have our nuts inside of our back plate. And then we can proceed to stitch it up. So to stitch it up, first take your back plate and from the back side, that's the side that doesn't have the chamfer on it, feed your shock cord through. And stop about uh, two inches from the end, leaving that much hanging out because you'll use that to tie up at the very end. And then uh, take your bottom piece, that's a little two two part, the two hole bit here, and feed that through. Next, 
you're going to take your front, that's the one that has a little T for thrifty on it, and you're going to put it to where the chamfer is facing in, to where the chamfers face each other like this. See the top, chamfer, chamfer, they're facing in towards each other. And the hole, feed that through. There you go, and see where this is where we're at right now. Next, we're gonna go from right here, sideways, and come out that little side hole right there. You aren't having to pull this super, super tight, just get a little bit snug. Now we're gonna add in one of the side pieces. So we can see here, follow the chamfers, keep all the chamfers in towards the inside. As you can see, chamfer facing in, in, in. And we're just going to follow that and push that on through. And I pre-drilled all these holes, or I guess reamed them out with a drill bit uh, before I started doing this. So your print uh, may not be perfect. Uh, which I always just run a little eighth inch drill bit down through there to make sure. Once you stick that through the hole, you can grab your needle nose and kind of pull it. Try not to be too rough with that little bit of tape that we have, you know, binding that end because it, it will kind of rough up and if it roughs up, it gets hard to push through the holes. This is the process you're going to repeat. You're just going to follow one hole to the next all the way down each side until you get through the whole thing. Just keep on running back and forth. You're not ever going to jump across this middle bit. You're just going to work on this one side, going back and forth like that, all the way through until we get to the top part. Once you reach the very top and you poke out up here, you're just going to come straight across over and to the other side. Take a look at this, how we weave that together real quick. We're just kind of letting it sit open for right now and we're going to at this point fold it over and we're going to add our other side piece making sure our chamfer is right up there at the top where it needs to be i'm just going to push that through and we're just going to do the exact same thing we did last time folding it over and stitching our way down the side once you reach the bottom you're just going to go back down through the very bottom hole and try to line up your bottom piece with that. And there you go. You just thread through all three of those and come out to the back side of the bottom. At that point you can tie off a knot right there. You can trim these whatever length you want, but then to keep them from pulling back up into here and loosening your mag pouch, I throw a little square knot right there in the very bottom. You tighten that down. There we go. Trim this whatever length you want and fray off, I mean, singe off the ends with the lighter. And uh, if you were doing the standard belt loop type, then uh, you'd be done right now. This would be, this would be it. You give it a fit check. You can always uh, tighten or loosen this right down here uh, to fit your needs. But that works pretty well. And finally, to uh, attach our angled belt loop, we're just going to uh, match up whatever holes we want. So we can either run them from this hole and this hole, which keep it straight up and down, this hole to either one of these side holes, which would uh, give you a little bit of an angle or you can run it from one of the far side holes to the opposite far side hole, like this, and that gives you a little bit more angle. So for the intermediate one, where it's just the middle to a side, um, you're gonna have to pay attention to where it only works one way. This middle hole to either one of these doesn't work, but this one to both of these do. So uh, just flip this around, it's the same both ways. Just make sure you know, find where the holes line up right with the angle you want, and you're just gonna screw your screw down through here. I have a print to where the threads actually uh, grab a little bit, but thread that in and uh, just stick it on there and go after it.
I like to get one snug. Now I reach in there with this, tighten up a little bit more, and then I can think about which way I want it to go. I'm right-handed, and I'm gonna put this one on my left side, so I'm gonna run it right about there. I drop my other one in. nice and tight but remember you are working with uh, 3d printed parts here so I mean you can't get too can't get too rough with them or else it is a possibility that uh, you might break something but anyways tight that down pretty good tighten this down pretty good and you should be good to go um, might be a good idea to put a little bit of thread locker on there too after you have everything together but we can toss that one on our belt, just slide our belt through, and then work it a little bit to get it loosened up and get the tension where we want it. But then after that, we'll be good to go.